Do you know who John Herbert Dillinger was? Have you ever wondered how a man could rob 24 banks and escape prison not once, but twice? Well, get ready to dive into the thrilling story of one of America's most notorious criminals. John Herbert Dillinger's audacious heists and infamous reputation made him a household name in the 1930s, and even forced J. Edgar Hoover to establish the FBI. From his early life to his daring prison breaks, and from his intense manhunt to his eventual downfall, the story of John Dillinger is one of the most gripping and captivating stories in American criminal history. Born on June 22, 1903, in Indianapolis, Indiana, Dillinger was the son of a grocer. His father was known for being strict and had a reputation for using corporal punishments to discipline his children. Unfortunately, Dillinger's mother died when he was only three years old. When his father remarried six years later, Dillinger despised his stepmother although he would later engage in a brief affair with her during his teenage years. John Dillinger was a troublemaker even as a kid, and his penchant for bullying others often got him into trouble. After quitting school, he found work at a machine shop, a common occupation for young people in pre-depression era America. Despite being a talented worker, Dillinger couldn't resist his wild streak and would often stay out late into the night. In an effort to keep his son out of trouble, Dillinger's father sold the family home and business and moved them to a rural farm. But the move proved futile, as Dillinger's rebellious nature persisted, and he struggled to adjust to life in the countryside. Despite his intelligence and skill, Dillinger's love for adventure and danger only grew stronger, leading him down a path that would make him infamous. One day, Dillinger stole a car and went on a joyride, only to be caught by the police. To avoid legal consequences and instill some discipline in the young troublemaker, the police made a deal. Dillinger could go free if he enlisted in the U.S. military. Dillinger joined the Navy and used his engineering skills as a petty officer third-class machinery repairman aboard the battleship USS Utah. But even in the military, Dillinger's misbehavior continued. He clashed with his superiors and eventually deserted the Navy while docked in Boston, having earned several punishments. A few months later, the Navy officially discharged him dishonorably. After returning home, Dillinger rekindled a relationship with his old flame and married 16-year-old Beryl Hobius in 1924, despite his angry father's approval. The young couple was determined to leave their small town behind and move to Indianapolis for a better life. But finding work was difficult, and Dillinger soon fell in with the wrong crowd, befriending local pool shark Ed Singleton. Determined to live the good life they felt they deserved, Dillinger and Singleton decided to turn to crime. Their first target was a local grocer in Dillinger's hometown of Mooresville. However, their plans went awry when they were spotted by a local minister who recognized them, leading to their swift arrest. The dream of a better life had turned into a nightmare, but it was only the beginning of Dillinger's criminal career. Despite having a troublesome past, his father showed him compassion and urged him to plead guilty, hoping that it would earn him leniency from the judge. However, Dillinger's previous run-ins with the law such as his military desertion and previous arrest for Grand Theft Auto, had already sullied his reputation, making his case even more challenging. As a result of his criminal record and the severity of the charges, the judge sentenced Dillinger to two consecutive sentences. The first was a term of 2 to 14 years for his intent to rob, and the second was a sentence of 10 to 20 years for his conspiracy to commit a felony. This punishment was severe, and it was undoubtedly a significant setback for Dillinger. On the other hand, Ed Singleton, Dillinger's accomplice, received a much lighter sentence of just two years after pleading guilty. The contrast between the sentences of the two men was stark, leaving Dillinger feeling frustrated and resentful of his father's advice. As Dillinger entered prison, he was determined to use his time there to transform himself into a formidable force, one who would strike fear into the hearts of anyone who dared to cross him. He vowed to emerge from prison as the meanest bastard you ever saw. This fierce determination and unrelenting spirit would come to define Dillinger and his actions for years to come. Despite the challenges that lay ahead, Dillinger refused to be defeated, and instead he channeled his anger and frustration into a burning desire for revenge and redemption. While serving his sentence, Dillinger had the opportunity to learn from some of the most notorious bank robbers of the time, including Harry Pete Piermont, Charles Mackley, Russell Clark, and Homer Van Meter. These seasoned criminals took Dillinger under their wing teaching him the ins and outs of bank robbery and planning future heists together. Dillinger soaked up their knowledge, expanding his criminal ambitions and gaining valuable experience. 
Despite his criminal activities, Dillinger's father tirelessly campaigned for his release and gathered a petition with 188 signatures attesting to his son's character and potential for rehabilitation. After serving nearly a decade in prison, Dillinger was finally released, only to find himself in a world ravaged by the Great Depression and devoid of job opportunities. The temptation of easy money was too much for him to resist, and he soon returned to his criminal ways, robbing a bank in Bluffton, Ohio. Unfortunately for Dillinger, he was quickly apprehended by the police just four months after his release from prison. While awaiting trial in county jail, he was discovered with what appeared to be an escape plan during a frisk. Although Dillinger denied any knowledge of the plan, it was later used by eight of his associates, who successfully escaped from prison with the aid of smuggled shotguns and rifles. Not long after his escape, Dillinger began his legendary crime spree, which included robbing multiple banks and police arsenals, as well as killing several police officers. The FBI, led by J. Edgar Hoover, became heavily involved in the pursuit of Dillinger and his gang and their efforts eventually paid off when Dillinger was located and killed by FBI agents in a shootout outside the Biograph Theater in Chicago on July 22, 1934. Despite his short criminal career, Dillinger had become a notorious figure in American folklore, with his daring escapes and charismatic persona capturing the public's imagination. After stealing several machine guns, rifles, revolvers, bulletproof vests, and ammunition from police arsenals in Auburn and Peru, Indiana, the Dillinger gang went on a string of successful bank robberies across the state, amassing tens of thousands of dollars. Tragically, during their crime spree, the gang killed a police detective in Chicago and a police officer during the robbery of the First National Bank of East Chicago. To avoid mounting heat from law enforcement, the gang headed south to Florida where they committed a string of local robberies before making their way to Tucson, Arizona. Despite their attempts to stay ahead of the FBI and its agents, a fire broke out on January 23, 1934, at the hotel where two of the gang members were hiding under assumed names. Firemen who arrived at the scene recognized the men from their wanted posters and contacted the police, who promptly arrested them. Dillinger's brazen escape from the Crown Point Jail made him a national celebrity and cemented his status as a folk hero to many Americans who were struggling during the Great Depression. He continued his string of robberies and bank heists, often with the help of his gang members, including his girlfriend, Billy Frechette. The FBI, led by J. Edgar Hoover, made capturing Dillinger their top priority and began an intense manhunt to bring him to justice. Dillinger's luck eventually ran out on July 22, 1934, when he was ambushed by FBI agents outside the Biograph Theater in Chicago, where he'd gone to see a movie. In the resulting shootout, Dillinger was fatally shot multiple times and died on the spot. His death was widely publicized and many mourned his passing, seeing him as a symbol of resistance against the harsh realities of the Depression era. After stealing the sheriff's car, Dillinger drove it across the Indiana-Illinois state line, unknowingly violating the National Motor Vehicle Theft Act. This federal felony drew the attention of the FBI, who had been assisting local police up until that point. The ensuing chase ultimately proved fatal for Dillinger. He later returned to Chicago and reunited with several former prison mates to continue their bank robbery spree. During this time, Dillinger lived with his girlfriend Evelyn Frechette in a small apartment. However, on March 30, 1934, two FBI agents spoke to the apartment manager after he reported two suspicious tenants. The FBI conducted surveillance on the apartment and suspected that the tenants, using the names Mr. and Mrs. Hellman, were actually Dillinger and his girlfriend. The following day, a field agent and a police officer arrived at Dillinger's apartment and were met by Evelyn Frechette, who quickly shut the door upon seeing them. The police surrounded the building, and during the ensuing siege, Dillinger's friend Homer Van Meter was killed in a shootout with law enforcement. In the chaos of the machine gun fire, Dillinger and Frechette managed to escape through a back door, though Dillinger was wounded in the process. They fled to Mooresville, Indiana, where Dillinger's father lived and remained there until Dillinger recovered. Despite being aware of his son's criminal activities, Dillinger's father kept their location secret from law enforcement. Eventually, Frechette left to visit a friend in Chicago, but was immediately arrested by the FBI upon arrival. With little concern for his girlfriend's arrest, Dillinger, now recovered from his gunshot wound, left his father's house and raided a police station in Warsaw, Indiana, to steal guns and bulletproof vests. He then fled to Upper Michigan, narrowly evading an FBI posse that had been sent to Warsaw by plane. However, a few days later, the FBI task force received a tip that Dillinger and his longtime partner in crime, Babyface Nelson, 
had checked into the Little Bohemia Lodge summer resort in Wisconsin. Under the cover of darkness, the FBI agents drove within two miles of the resort and turned off their vehicle lights. They then proceeded on foot through the woods, determined not to let Dillinger escape this time. Unfortunately, as the agents got closer to the lodge, they were met with a barrage of machine gun fire from the roof, forcing them to call for backup, which did not arrive in time. Dillinger had once again managed to evade law enforcement and escape. However, two months later, Anna Sage, a madam of the local brothel in Gary, Indiana, contacted the FBI with information on Dillinger's whereabouts. She offered to turn him in for a cash reward and help with her deportation case, as she faced the risk of being sent back to her native Romania. The FBI agreed to her demands, and Sage provided them with precise details of Dillinger's location, even disclosing his plans for the following Sunday night. On the summer day of Sunday, July 22nd, the FBI had planned an ambush for notorious bank robber John Dillinger. Dillinger was walking down the street with two female companions when an FBI agent waiting in a doorway lit a cigar as a signal for the other agents. Suddenly, FBI men swarmed the alley and surrounded Dillinger. Upon realizing the situation, Dillinger pulled out his pistol and attempted to flee. However, the agents fired their guns and three bullets struck Dillinger, causing him to fall to the pavement. Despite medical intervention, Dillinger was pronounced dead merely 20 minutes later. John Dillinger's image was often portrayed by the media as a modern-day Robin Hood, a charismatic and daring figure that garnered him a certain level of admiration from the public. Dillinger's gang frequently gave interviews to local newspapers, which further heightened his public profile and made him a household name. Despite his popular appeal, the Federal Bureau of Investigation deemed him a dangerous criminal and made several attempts to apprehend him before the final fatal ambush on that fateful Sunday. Dillinger's larger-than-life persona and daring exploits captured the public's imagination, making him a legendary figure in American folklore. John Dillinger was embroiled in multiple charges for his involvement in various heinous crimes, including murder. However, despite his notorious reputation, Dillinger vehemently denied ever using his firearm to harm anyone, asserting that he only used it to create fear and intimidate his victims. Unfortunately for him, his criminal activities eventually caught up with him, leading to his inevitable downfall. His lifeless body lay on the cold pavement, much like many other infamous criminals who met a similar fate in the past. Interestingly, Dillinger's criminal pursuits share some similarities with contemporary cyber criminals, who exploit vulnerabilities in digital systems to rob innocent people of their hard-earned money. These cyber attackers can target dozens or even hundreds of individuals without ever being caught, leaving a trail of victims in their wake. That's why, in today's world, it's essential to have reliable and efficient tools to protect oneself online, no matter where they are. John Herbert Dillinger's reign of terror was short-lived, but his story continues to fascinate people to this day, from his daring bank robberies to his dramatic escapes from prison and run-ins with law enforcement. Dillinger's life was filled with action and danger. His legacy has been immortalized in books, films, and even music. But beyond the Hollywood portrayals and the legend that surrounds him, Dillinger was a real person who left a lasting impact on the history of crime and law enforcement in the United States. His legacy serves as a reminder of the importance of justice and the power of determination in the face of adversity. With that said, thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more. And if you found this content helpful, give the video a like. See you in the next video. Till then, take care.